Welcome back. It is Wednesday, November 23rd in the NBA. I have five picks coming your guys' way. But first, let's recap yesterday. Get out those brooms. A 3-0 clean sweep of the day. Ben Simmons, over 11.5 rebounds plus assists. Didn't matter what line you got him at. He easily hits that. Dylan Brooks, under 30.5 PRAs. Didn't matter what line you got him at. Easily hits that. And our added play, Jaron Jackson Jr., over 16.5 points. He scores 17 early in the third quarter. A clean and 0 Three and zero sweep. We will take that. Now, yesterday we did have a little bit of injury news. I did not expect John Morant to play. He obviously lowered Dylan Brooks's line, but Dylan Brooks gets it done. That guy stinks. Now today we got twelve games on, five picks, and we also yesterday if you didn't if you missed it, our college football picks went live. Go check out that. I'm on a seven and one run in college football. But today it's gonna be my last video until Friday. Technically, you will see a Thanksgiving NFL video posted a little bit later on today at twelve p.m. So to all my United States followers or anyone in the whole world celebrating Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys have a great time with your family and friends. I'm thankful for each and every one of you who wakes up and watches these videos every morning or you watch them in the afternoon. I don't care when you watch. If you're tuning in, I appreciate it. Like I said, NFL Thanksgiving best bets video, including three player props, two spread picks, three parlays. That is live at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I'll link it at the end of the video and in the pinned comment section down below. And as I've talked about, I beat it into your guys' head. My Basically, my last time saying this, Prize Picks has that free square for Justin Jefferson to get one receiving yards. It's a free leg for all your parlays. And if you sign up for using sign up for Prize Picks using code COS, you get a 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. So you deposit 100, you get another $100, you get $200 to play with. Go take advantage. It's free money. There's a free square. A lot to take advantage of it. We'll have our favorite plays in the next video in a second. But thanks all for all your guys' love and support. Underdog Fantasy also has a payout booster. But look, no more messing around. We got no more added player props today. I'm only doing these five plays. So what you see in this video is what you get. Let's start with the first guy and the guy I'm incredibly thankful for on a Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving. Our man, Tyrese Halliburton, taking his over 19 and a half points, minus 105 on DraftKings. You can take this at 20 and a half if you want. Now, Tyrese Halliburton is a COS Hall of Famer. His last time out that we took his over, he hurt us, and that's okay. Now, usually we take a points plus assist for Mr. Halliburton, but, and you could take that too. I just don't know if he gets a ton of assists today, and you'll understand why. I think he scores more, and he could still get 15 assists, but I think he scores at least 20 points. Now, we got an over under 235 and a half, the second highest on the slate. The game with the highest over under, we'll talk about a player in that game in a little bit, but Halliburton scored 18 points in the last game. He was one for five from three, only played 27 minutes against the Magic. Now, if he plays his normal minutes, he hits that over probably 99 times out of 100. But this game is the pick em against the Timberwolves, and it should be a high-scoring game, as I already talked about, and the Pacers are at home. Tyrus has played really well at home, 20.9 points per game, hitting this over in seven of nine home games. Now, Halliburton, the Pacers, will likely need to take advantage of Rudy Gobert because Rudy Gobert plays a lot of drop coverage. If you don't know what that is, basically you set a pick and the guy that's the being picked, the center normally, doesn't come up and try to contest any shots. So what happens? Well, over the last seven games, Timberwolves allowed 32.15 points per game to point guards, first in the NBA. 4.59 three-pointers allowed to point guards, first in the NBA. Halliburton, a very smart guy. Normally, a lot of his assists go to those centers, but with Gobert dropping back into the set, into the paint, we're going to see Halliburton be open a lot. And I think he knocks down a lot of threes today. He could, I think his regular over-under for threes is two and a half. He could knock down five threes today. It would not surprise me this is Timberwolves they're playing a lot of drop coverage even if it's Carl Anthony Towns they he plays drop too I think we're going to see Halliburton shoot a lot and he's normally not the most aggressive guy but this is a great matchup for him to shoot a lot in and Halliburton averaging 15 field goal attempts per game he usually hovers around that 14 to 16 number and 14 guards in November have attempted 15 or more field goal attempts against this Minnesota Timberwolves team 12 of them scored 20 plus points. The two guys that missed scored 19 and 18 points, one shot away. Halliburton gets a lot of assists to guys underneath. I don't know if he has those guys open today. I think Halliburton shoots a lot more from the outside. I think that's how you beat the Timberwolves. Go Tyrese. We love you. See us all of famer. Tyrese Halliburton over 19 and a half points. I don't mind his other lines, but I think points is where he has a big day today. Now, my second play, you might guys might not like this one. It's Giannis Attentacumpa. I'm taking his under. Yes, you heard that right. Under 31 and a half points. You can take this down to 30 and a half. Now, I know taking a Giannis under might be scary, and some people might not tail, and that's okay. I mean, but you got to think about it. scoring 32 points in an NBA game. Yeah, that's a little bit tough. A lot of a lot of things have to go right for Giannis to score 32 or more and ruin this under bet for us. I mean, you got to think about it. this game could be a blowout. Bucks seven and a half point favorites at home. Giannis could struggle again from the field or from the free throw line, which he's been doing recently. Giannis could get in foul trouble. Giannis could get injured. There's so many different ways that Giannis could go under this line. 31 and a half, way too high. Now, I considered it over the last game when it was 29 and a half, but 
31 and a half. I just don't know. I, I don't know if this game is close. I don't, I'm not rooting for Giannis to get injured. Don't get me wrong. That would absolutely suck. Giannis, one of my favorite players to watch. Just 32 points is a lot to score. There's too many ways for him to go under. And over the last six games, Giannis, under in five of six games, he scored 37 points in their last game, making 16 of like 24 shots. But that was against a team in the Blazers who have really struggled defensively as of late. Now, the Bulls are a league average team in terms of points in the paint allowed. But over the last three games, they're second in the league in terms of fewest points for point in the points in the paint allowed with 38.7 and on Giannis's last seven games for Chicago he's under in six of those seven games in the regular season the Bulls are probably going to shell out everything to try to stop him and also there's a potential return of Chris Middleton I can't predict the future I can't predict NBA injury news but Chris Middleton was just recalled from the G League a couple days ago maybe I think on Monday could he return in this game and lower Giannis's line wouldn't surprise me at all even if he doesn't play I still don't know Giannis under this line in 17 of his last 25 games without Chris Middleton the over-under is only like 2 18, so they're not expecting like a 2 8, 2 30, 2 40 type game. They could blow out the Bulls. I just would rather take Giannis's under than rely on him to score 32 points. Too many ways for him to go under. I think this is too high of a line. Give me Giannis Antetokounmpo under 31 and a half points. Let's move on to a guy that hurt us yesterday or two days ago. We're giving him a second chance. Evan Mobley taking his over 14 and a half points, minus 110 on DraftKings. He can play us at 15 and a half. Now, Look, I got to give Mobley a second chance because everyone was on his overs last game, including me. I took his over in PRAs. He only had, he ended with 22. We needed 26. Donovan Mitchell is famous. You saw it go if you were watching, if you're on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever. You saw a viral clip of he's stealing the 10th rebound away from Mobley, which would have gotten Mobley a double-double. Now, I'm not rooting for Mobley to get a double-double today, although I don't mind his PRA line. Hopefully, Donovan Mitchell, in the return, he passes the ball. That's all we need. We need Mobley to shoot the ball. He only had six field goal attempts last season, his second lowest on the season. And in November, we've seen Mobley have games where he doesn't shoot a lot. Sometimes it's not necessarily his, his doing, but we've seen him in November attempt less than 10 shots in four games. In the previous four instances, or previous three instances, because the fourth was last game, he attempted 14, 14, and 18 field goal attempts the next game, scoring 11, 26, and 20 points. Now, sure, the 11's not great. He shot 5 for 14 from the field. If you can tell me Evan Mobley goes out there and shoots 10 to 14 times tonight, probably take this almost every night of the game, every night. I mean, prior to going under last game, Mobley scored 15-plus points in three straight, hit it in six of his last seven. I just think Mobley's too talented, and it's a pretty good matchup against the Portland team. Like we talked about with Giannis, struggling on defense and Look, I just don't know. I think Mobley has a pretty good game. I don't see him hurting us back to back. I think a lot of people are going to be off Mobley and it would only take a psycho to bet him again twice after just shooting six times. Well, maybe I'm a little crazy, but I think Mobley has a pretty good game. I think he can get us 15 points. I think it's over 14 and a half. Go get it done. Mobley score. Hit in the first half for all the haters out there. Now let's move on to another guy. Since we ran back one play, let's do it again. Mr. Jante Murray of the Atlanta Hawks over 20 and a half points, minus 109 on Barstool. Would not surprise me if this goes up to 21 and a half. Mr. Murray likes to end on you know the 19 20 21 points so if you do get a 21 and a half line you're on like a fan duel i don't mind sgping that or same game parlaying it down to maybe 20 plus points plus like a three pointer if Mo if murray doesn't hit a three he ain't hitting this over i'm just gonna let you know now murray like i said last game he hurt us no two ways about it. He went out there, shot four for 17 from the field against the Cleveland Cavaliers, scoring 11 points. It wasn't due to lack of volume, and 17 field goal attempts is more than enough. If you can get that against this uh, Kings team, 21 points should be well in the realm of possibility. Now, Murray, not normally a streaky shooter. He is shooting 45% from the field, I think 44% in his career. So I got to go out there and shoot 23.5% in the game. Very unlikely. And, you know, he had a game similar to this earlier this season when he didn't shoot well. He went five for 18 from the field, shooting 27.8%. The game immediately following that, he scored 26 points in a blowout win. So he could even scored more, but it was a blowout win. And while this game could be a blowout against the Hawks or against the Kings, that would a little bit surprise me. This is two, uh, the Kings are surging. The Hawks are pretty good. Over under 238, the highest on the slate. And the Kings, as we talked about, they've given up the sixth most points per game to shooting, or point guards, third most points per game to shooting yards this season. You look at Murray, he played the Kings last season when he was back in, you know, the other side, the other conference, he scored 26 25 and 29 when he was in the Western Conference when he played the Kings more often that was all last year hitting this over in all three of the games he's averaged 18.8 field goal attempts per game I know Trey Young will get his but I think Murray will get his two 18 guards have attempted 15 or more field goal attempts against the Kings 14 of them have hit the over 14 of 18 two guys four guys that missed Clay Thompson twice we know he's been struggling earlier this year Damian Lillard went five for 18 and Dylan Brooks last night 
We know Dylan Brooks is trash. DeJounte Murray is not trash. I think De we see a guy like DeJounte Murray have a pretty good day. Kings give up the second most points per game in the paint. We see a guy like Murray driving to the rim 13 times per game. I think it's the high scoring game. I think this is the back and forth game. The Kings just went soaring under last game against the Grizzlies. I think they maybe have a chance to go over this one. Who wants to play dinner or who wants to play defense on th before Thanksgiving? Absolutely no one. Go DeJounte Murray. We like his over. Now my final pick of the day. Come in, to, come in, everyone. Carl Anthony Towns, over 22 and a half points, minus 105 on DraftKings. I was looking for another under to take, but I think Cat can get this done. Now, why I said come in, because we need to pray. Carl, do not get into foul trouble. I know. It's a big ask. Maybe Carl out there, if you're watching, just don't foul. Let them have the easy lane. It doesn't matter. You got a, you got a day off tomorrow. You can go eat a lot of food tomorrow. Like that's the thing with Carl Anthony Towns. If he can avoid foul trouble, we should have no problem getting this over against the Pacers. And very rarely do you see me pick two plays in one game, but I like this one. Cat is coming off a 25-point game versus Miami. He scored 20 points in the first half, only five in the second half. It was a game that had a combined score of 206. Like the over-under in this game is 236. If they even get close to that, then Cat will have to score a lot of points unless it's an Anthony Edwards show, which could happen. But as I talked about with Halliburton, high over under and the Pacers don't play a lot of defense. They give up the second most points per game to centers. Now, technically Rudy Gobert is the center for this Minnesota Timberwolves team, but let's be honest. Rudy Gobert doesn't shoot the ball. It's going to be a lot of Carl Anthony Towns today, and I think he has a pretty good game. Now, over the last four, we've seen Cat go over this line in three of four, including scored 25 plus points in all of those uh, three games he went over. He also attempted 14 or more field goal attempts, which is good to see. And last game, he had to deal against with Bam Adebayo, a very good Miami Heat de defense. And when he wasn't being guarded by Bam Adebayo, anytime he tried to drive, he was double teamed. Now, I don't think the Pacers do that. And Jalen Smith, a much worse defender than a guy like Bam Adebayo. And I don't see them putting Miles Turner on a guy like. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, unless they absolutely have to, or maybe those are the only two big men in. But you see Cat, he plays a lot of the first quarter, a lot of the second, or a lot of the third quarter, so he gets some time against the second unit, and the Pacers' second unit has no size. So I think Carl will have some chances to attack them, and Carl has absolutely feasted against the Indiana Pacers in his career. In his last 12 games against them, he's averaged 27.9 points per game, hitting this over in 9 of 12 games. I know there's always a risk of foul trouble, but I think this is a high-paced game. I think he shoots 15 to 20 times tonight, also gets to the free throw line a good amount. He played Indiana twice last year, scored 32 points, and then had 15 points, but the 15 points was a game. He fouled out. He only had 22 minutes in that game. Cat can avoid foul trouble. We can keep this game close. Hopefully we can cash out Mr. Halliburton, Mr. Carl Anthony Towns. We can go 5-0 today. Who says no? Those are my five plays. I appreciate you for tuning in. Since I love you guys, thankful for all you guys tuning in. Put up all the five plays on the screen. Carl's over. We got Evan Mobley's over. We got Giannis's under. We got uh, Mr. Tyrese Halliburton's over in points. And then our final one is going to be DeJounte Murray over 20 and a half points. Those are our five plays. No added plays today. Let's go for our five and O's back to back sweep. Appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. It's time to shout out some COS All Stars. If I help to make some money, go become an All Star. Let's talk about these people. We got Daniel. We got GH. We got Joseph. We got Just. Incredible. We got Tyler. Tyler Newman, Ki Ki Wane, uh, 12, Hassan, Rim Hat, we got King Tay, we got Matt, Thane, Lenois, Brad, Randall, Baldessaire, butchered that, K Space I, and another Austin. Appreciate you guys as always. Sorry I butchered a lot of those names. Appreciate you guys so, so much. Now, our two final reminders. Thanksgiving NFL video will be live at 12 p.m. Eastern time in a couple hours. If you it might already be live. If it is live, it's already right here on the screen. Go click it. Check out my favorite plays and player parlays in that in tomorrow's slate of NFL action. Prize Picks also has that free square. Go sign up using our code COS for 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. Appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. This is Austin. I'll see you guys back again on Friday. Let's have a great day. See you guys back then on Friday. We'll recap. Peace out.